One of the best ways to learn about your ancestors is to connect with your living relatives. Today we're going to discuss the cousin connection. Tips to grow your family tree using the internet to reach out to cousins around the world. Let's begin the genealogy quick start. During what I like to call the roots era of genealogy research, you know when Alex Haley's novel was first televised and everyone began searching for their family history. I hear, and I don't know if this is an urban myth, but I hear that at one point there was a line wrapped around the National Archives with people wanting to research their family. Back then, one technique that they used to reach out to cousins was the phone book. They'd look people up in, with the same surname, and then they would just cold call, cold calling for ancestors. Very interesting. Once the internet became common, genealogy second only to pornography grabbed the internet by the cojones and the modern era of genealogy was here. Records and indexes were everywhere online. To connect with cousins, message boards and blogs were used. To my surprise, one day I was contacted by someone who believed that at one time his ancestors owned my ancestors. Now to most people that might sound creepy, but as an African American researcher, I started dancing around the living room. I was just hoping that he was not looking to reconstitute any ancestral relationships from the past, which may or may not have occurred. But more on that later. Today, we're in a whole new era. I like to call it hypermodern. We're breaking out of traditional genealogy boxes and exploring a whole new level of connectedness. Connections come from sharing. If you're willing to share, the world of your ancestry can open up in ways which you could never imagine. So today, I have my buddy here, Russ Worthington. Hi, Russ, how are you? I'm doing great, nice to be with you. Thank you so much for taking that journey from North Jersey down here to Philly. Well, it's coming home actually for me, so I enjoyed <laughs> the trip. And the reason I have you here is because you are like one of the most internet savvy people that I know. You're just, everyone knows Russ from the internet. So the quick start method starts with step one, which would be to create a tree online. Yep. So there's lots of different companies out there. What are some of the major companies that you would say would be a good place to create a tree online? Ancestry.com and their online trees are free, which some people don't realize. Okay, so wait a minute. Ancestry is a subscription service. Ancestry has a subscription service, yes. But you can put a tree up for free. Absolutely. So what are the other two? Uh, FamilySearch.org has a similar. Uh, they have a different goal in mind, but that's okay. Um, the, the third one is MyHeritage also a subscription service and they have a limited amount of people that you can have in an online tree. Having people in an online tree will make cousin connections. So you have a good term for cousin connections. Yeah, I call it cousin, cousin bait. Cousin bait, you reel them in, I reel right? Them in. <laughs> My heritage is a little different from um, Ancestry and Family Search in that it has more of that international component. Yeah, they have, uh, if, if you have international ancestors, you might want to look at what's available on MyHeritage because they are an international company uh, and they have a lot of international records and they have an international search engine that is outstanding. Fantastic. The difference between those two, Ancestry and MyHeritage and Family Search, is that Family Search is one tree. So we're all, their dream is to build one tree as opposed to everybody having different trees. So yes. I know there's a lot of people that have some issues with that, but we'll discuss that when we do yep. our hands on. So that's step one is to create a tree. Absolutely. So step two is to create a blog, start a blog. So one thing we should warn people about creating blogs, right, Blo uh, Russ? <laughs> they're like potato chips. You can't just create one. Once yeah. you, there's no one who has one blog. Once you create one, you're just dying to create another one. Yes. So how many blogs do you have, Russ? I have three. I have one that's cemetery-based, uh, but I'm not as active as I had been. Uh, I have one on the genealogy program that I use, 
And the third one is for my surname. It started out my surname, but is branched off as I find new cousins, I've branched off to my ancestors. Okay, and so what other types of, like how would you get started creating a blog? Like what are the companies you, did, did you refer sure. to? The, the two companies that, the major companies are wordpress.com. They have a free version. They also, if you're a professional and want to spend a little more time, they also have a commercial version. Uh, Blogger is p part of Google. Mm -hmm. And the nice thing about Blogger is the search engine by Google. So you, you, all, you told me this great story that from your blog, you made put up a post and in 15 minutes you had two new cousins. I did. Two I had new two, cousins. I had two surnames in the blog and the person recognized both surnames and made the connection instantly. They did a search for one or both of the surnames, got my blog, and we knew we were cousins. It was interesting that we were already friends. Okay. We already knew each <laughs> other, but didn't know that we had a cousin connection. So we'll, we'll share more about that later. Um, so that step two yep. is go ahead and start that blog. Um, so step three is to go ahead and interact more online. So yep. there's cemetery sites as well as Facebook. Everyone's using Facebook. So Russ, you are very involved in cemeteries. Like um, what are a couple of the cemetery sites that are good? One is Billion Graves and its advantage for Billion Graves is uh, the GPS component that they have added. Uh, so you can go to a cemetery and take a picture of a headstone and the GPS location will be with that photo. I used that, I was at looking for one cemetery and I knew the cemetery name from a record and I drove to where I thought that cemetery was and when I drove in, the stone, the sign on the entrance had a different name. And I looked at Billion Graves and it gave me a different name. I drove around the cemetery, found the garage for that cemetery and the other cemetery name was there. So Billion Graves put, told me where I was and uh, it was good. So uh, that's the GPS uh, one. What is the original, the one that everyone knows? Everybody knows Find a Grave. Now Find a Grave was an independent company for a long time, but it is now part of the Ancestry.com family and it's still free because we, the contributors, the people that go take pictures of headstones um, are contributing the content so it's free for everybody. That's good because uh, there's a lot more free content online than we realize and there's also Facebook. So for me, Facebook is a way um, where we've created groups. We've created um, closed groups and open groups because you can have both and we kind of wanted to have an area where, so it's interesting. We're talking about connecting with cousins of people that we might not know. When you have a large family like mine, you have cousins that you might kind of know how you're connected, but you don't really know each other. And so that's one way that Facebook enables cousins to meet, make that connection, even though it's not like a distant. But yeah. you have a really good, um, how you used Facebook, because you're always working, Rush. You're always <laughs> thinking, you're always trying to come up with these different ways, but you use it, again, to keep up with living relatives. Tell us about something, a product that came out yeah, of Facebook. Well, I got a, a, a Facebook message from one of my cousins and said, my seven-year-old just came home from school and wants to know where we came from. And because I already had the data in my database, I sat down and created a book. And uh, two hours later, I had five copies of the book. And <laughs> over the weekend, I drove it out and personally handed it to that seven-year-old. Oh, how great. And because of Facebook, you were able to keep up with births and marriages. And then because of Facebook, this little person was able to reach out to you and boom. Yep. Here you go, family yep. history. So that's step three is to interact more online. So step three is something everybody's into, DNA testing. 
Yes. So how many different companies have you tested with? I, I have tested with two. Okay. And, uh, but I have my results on several. So tell us about like which company sh should people test with? What are the three major companies? Ancestry.com has a DNA product. Uh, 23andMe has a DNA product. Family Tree DNA has a product. And just recently announced is that my, my heritage, heritage now has a DNA uh, offering. And the nice thing about that is I had another, another connection using the DNA because my tree was already on my heritage. My DNA results came from Ancestry that I transferred to MyHeritage, and the DNA search engine at MyHeritage gave me another connection. So we're gonna talk about that more in depth because that is where the magic happens, when that DNA connection meets up with a tree and specific, specific ancestors. Yep. So we're gonna show them that when we do our hands-on component. One other comment if I might where do I put it as many places as I can yes 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 so you spread it all over the place you never, like you, you said never, you never know where your cousin's you gonna never come. know where your cousin's going to be exactly so you put that bait all over the yep. place right I love that so that's the quick start method first you want to create an online tree then you want to start a blog next you want to interact more online using cemetery sites and Facebook Finally, you want to take the DNA test. Now, let's go to the computer, get more hands-on on working the Cousin Connection Quick Start. Now we're going to show you hands-on how to execute the Cousin Connection Quick Start. So you ready, Russ? We're going to show uh, you how to do this thing? I am. All right, so the first thing that we're doing is con creating an online tree. So Russ has a tree on Ancestry. I have a tree on Family Search. We're going to show you all about those. So first, we're at Ancestry.com. And to get started, you would just come to Trees. Go to Trees and go down to Create and Manage Trees, which is the bottom menu item. And there, I have a bunch of trees up. But Russ if you... has a thousand trees <laughs> and at least five master trees. <laughs> so down here, I noticed, Russ, there's two ways you can do this. You can create a tree and add them one by one or GEDCOM. So GEDCOM is kind of like a language where you can take your whole database and suck in thousands of names and dates. Yep. But yep. you don't like that, Russ. No, I, I don't. That's a way to get quick start. But uh, <laughs> I would rather do it one at a time. And, and I find it uh, that it's more accurate for me. I have less cleanup if I hand enter it uh, to begin with. So that's clicking on create a new tree. And I, I started creating a tree. And I did exactly what you said. I did it one by one. And I've noticed where I have errors. Yep. So it's probably even if you have a tree that's, you know, set up and everything, do it Russ's way. Do it Cousin Russ's way and put them in one at a time. But let's go ahead and look at your master, one of your trees. Yep. So this is what a tree looks like. And um, this is beautiful, Russ. You've done a lot of work. I have. I have about 9,000 people in that tree that I have researched. Wow. Uh, I've added pictures. You can see some pictures showing up I on the tree. I love the pictures. And uh, we'll get into it, but those shaky leaf hints are by each person who has a hint. So this is what makes putting a tree online a no-brainer. Well, All you're yep. doing is putting, this, putting in some basic information and the tree goes out and searches stuff for that you. That does. So Shaky Leaves His is Ancestry's way of bringing you data for that person. If you click on that leaf, it'll take you to a record. That, uh, so this is showing you have three hints uh, for this particular that's ancestor. Cor that's correct. That's my grandfather. If you shake on, click on the Ancestry hints, it'll give you three hints from Ancestry. So the other thing I wanted to show here, so we showed how to put stuff in. Now I wanted to show them how to search. So once you put this stuff in, you don't have to keep typing, retyping names. You can just come right here, and on we're on Henry Russell. We can just do a search. We can yep. search Ancestry for him right now. That's correct. But what I wanted to do is show you what his profile looks like. 
So who's Henry Russell Worthington? That is my grandfather. That's your granddad, okay. And so this is a nice page, some facts, a little timeline sure. on the side there, some cool. records. Let me show you the, 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 the life story page. Okay. Click on that because the life story will bring in a storyline including maps and a brief story that I did not have to create. I like this. I just actually, I'm in Ancestry all the time and I just noticed this life story. So they kind of just, they, it's really nice and graphical. Yep. But what I wanted to show you is how you can search. So just by having all this information in here, you can go to click on search and it will go ahead and search, um, it'll search Ancestry for you. And you can go ahead and make any changes that you would yep. like. So that's the Ancestry tree. Let's go ahead and look at the family search tree. So this is family search. And once you just get an account, the account is free. Once you do that, you're just going to come in here to family tree. And when you select tree, normally what you will see is it will ask you to log in. <laughs> but what you're going to see is you're going to see your name, whatever name you put in, and it's going to ask you to go ahead and start entering your information. So here it has me, and I, it asked me to just add who my father is, add who my mother is, and continue with my tree. So what I wanted to show you is this is what the ancestor, excuse me, the family search tree looks like. Just like with Ancestry, you can go ahead and you can put in pictures. And this is what I love about this, this family search tree. Um, you can view your tree in different ways. So let's say I want to see my father. I want to see his tree. Oops. So I'm going to click on him. I'm going to say I want him to be the focus. And now what I can do is I can see his ancestry tree in different ways. So I can see it this way. And this is what I love. This is so cool. You can see is the ancestry in a fan chart. Yep. That is it looks really like you have awesome. some blank spots in your research. I have research. lots of work to do. <laughs> I have so much work to do. So let me go back to the tree. And what I wanted to show you, just like with ancestry, and it's not on these. I think I have to go a little further. They give you little hints as well. Um, I will show you that. On, I've cleaned up some of my hints because I get really excited when I see them. So rarely do you see them on here. But here's an example of an ancestor, Lisa Hart. So this little blue thing is telling me that there is a hint for her. So by selecting her, I can um, go and view her profile. I can see what hints they created for me, and I can see all the information about her. So. Here is her vital information, what I have about her. Here's her family members and her siblings, the sources that I have as well. Um, what's up here are the hints. It's telling me there's a marriage record here for her that I can look at. So I can just simply click on the, one of these records. It's going to show me that information. I know that Square Daniels is her husband, so this is definitely a match for me, and I can review and add it. So that is the magic of putting these trees up, because they'll search for you. So the other thing, when you talk about cousin connection, right? With ancestry, the cousin connection is because the match from one ancestor on one tree comes up. With Family search, you kind of have the same thing, but also it'll tell you down here who's making changes. So based off of, because remember, family search is a single tree. Um, everyone is using the same tree. You're not going to, you should not have your ancestor in that tree multiple times. Um, so as I showed you with ancestor, you can search. What I love about family search is that you can search family search. You can also search ancestry, finding my past and my heritage, which is great. So one tree, you can search multiple platforms. So that's pretty cool and a great way to get cousin beat, to yep. place cousin beat. All right. So that was creating an online tree. 
let's now go to starting a blog. And so this is your um, blog. And so there's all kinds of blogs out there that you can have, yep. right? Because I have, so you have one that is not necessarily just your surname, but it's kind of your family, your body of research. It started out as the surname, but quickly as I found cousins, I had to expand. You had to expand. So for, for me, what happened was I created one for like my family reunion. You, you're my friend, so you see like we're very big re on our reunion. So I created that blog, but then I was itching to do another blog on my other side of my family. So I created a blog called Alabama uh, Genealogy in Color. And I got other people to submit things to this website. And um, with my Alabama blog, I had found um, legislative acts for the state of Alabama. Um, and in those records, they had manumissions, they had slave transportations. And so I was blown away that this information was just sitting there. And I feared that someone's ancestor is in there. So I created an index and put it up. And wouldn't you know that people started coming in and seeing their ancestors. Yep. So that's what blogs do. They do. That's what blogs do. Great way to make get cousin beat. So let's talk about interacting online. So find a grave. This is one of your places that you hang out a lot. Yep. So let's search for, is it Henry Russell Worthington? Yes, you can okay. do that. Let's search for Henry Russell Worthington. Are there lots of them? Which? There should be at least three. Okay. Should I just put the country? Yeah, USA will find. Okay. Which one? Well, you actually brought up my father and my grandfather. Oh. So there is my father, who is uh, uh, buried in Haddonfield, which is across the river. But the nice thing about Find a Grave, which I really like, is that you can create trees online. For an example, click on my grandfather, and you will see where he is buried, and he's, oh. that's him. So but you're creating links on the, so you're taking pictures of the headstone. Yep. Then you're creating links and kind of linking your family together. Yep, and that, that will take it to uh, his father, his children, my grandfather's children. Wow, and uh, the siblings. And the siblings from my parents, uh, from, my, from my dad, or my grandfather. You do something very interesting with Find a Grave and Census Records. Briefly tell me what you do. I compliment or compliment a census record with Find a Grave because I know where they were and the ages according to the census records. Find a Grave will help me clarify the dates. For an example, the census record would not tell me that my grandfather was born in July. Right, gotcha. That is a very good tip. So the other for interacting online is to create a Facebook page. So this is an example of a closed group. So for my family, everyone who's descendant from mama and papa, we created a Facebook group. And it's a great way so that we can interact and talk to each other without worrying about the, you know, the whole world. But then also we have a um, open group that's more of a community-based one where we might post um, elementary school pictures from people from like the 60s and stuff. So Facebook is a great way. Anyone can create a group and you can decide who you want as your members. And this is an example um, for veterans. So we were celebrating um, our troops. So Facebook is a great way to kind of keep up with um, your ancestors as well as your living relatives. So that one was to interact more online. So finally, DNA. Everybody is taking DNA test. Everybody is taking DNA test. So let's go. You showed me something that blew my mind, Russ. Blew my uh -huh. yep. mind. So what you're going to show us now is how DNA 
and trees yep. work together. So which one should I select? Click, click, there you go, click on that. Okay. Now click on view all matches. I'm not concerned at this point about ethnicity estimates, but click on view. So, let's, so this, is, this is a little pie chart that everyone yep. talks about on those commercials, which are ethnicity, but we're, we're beyond that. We're genealogists, we're into the real stuff. So we're gonna click on view all DNA yep. matches. So these are people who have a chromosomal match to you. Yes, sure. So what you taught me is this, to come to these hints. Yep. Very cool. So when you go to the hint, what is this telling you? This is more than just you match with DNA. Yep, it's going to be a match between my tree and somebody else's tree. Okay, so this is telling you how many people they have in their tree. This leaf is telling you that you have an ancestral match. So you want to select this one? Yeah, I okay. do. <laughs> now, what's nice about what they have done, if you scroll down just a little bit, you'll see exactly how we're connected. Okay. This is new. Like, this is a big deal. DNA plus trees make the difference. Because you can't just do the DNA, right. and you can't just do the trees. They complement one another. I don't think you could do either one separately. You use them together, get a better result. Exactly. So, in addition to the quick start, you have some additional news to share with a new app that came out. I do. The new app just came out called We're Connected, and it will it's for the smart devices and it will tell you about one a day who your new connections are and the incredible part is that my facebook friends are my cousins <laughs> so russ you are called cousin russ because you like to hang out tell us about the hangout i hang out with dear myrtle DearMyrtle.com was started probably about the same time you did. Uh, the same story that you had in the introduction. I've heard from Mert for <laughs> years. Um, but we do online education using the Google Hangout platform. It's free. Uh, we do uh, three shows. This week we're doing three shows. Uh, Mondays with Mert, we talk about whatever's trending in the genealogy community. Um, and it's all free. And right? it's all free. It's all free uh, at hangouts.deermyrtle.com. Um, Wednesday night we do something special, and tomorrow night we're going to be doing this app. We're related. So I heard that the thing that everyone loves about this is that they can find out that they're related to famous people. Yes. Are you related to any famous people? Barack Obama, <laughs> John Kerry, Walt Disney. Wow, that is so oh, hilarious. Oh, we're in Philadelphia, uh -huh. Ben Franklin. No way, you're a cousin of Ben? I am. Very cool, poor cousin Russ, right? <laughs> <laughs> cool, Russ, thank you so much for coming to Philly Cam and sharing with us ways to reel in those cousins with that cousin Ben. It's an honor. So thank you so much. Uh, let's just review quickly the quick start for the Cousin Connection. First, you wanna definitely create an online tree. Why not have someone, mechanical researcher family for you, help you out? Next step would be to start a blog. Great way to write your family history piece by piece. Next, you wanna interact more online using cemetery sites and Facebook. Finally, go ahead and take that DNA test so that you can take trees and match them with DNA. Thank you so much for joining Genealogy Quick Start. That was The Cousin Connection.